Happy New Year everybody, welcome back to the channel, it's your boy Sly Jordy and welcome back to F1 23 My Team Career Mode for the end of Season 2 and the beginning of Season 3. And first of all, I want to thank you guys so, so, so much for um, joining the live stream last time. It's given me a lot to think about in terms of where to take this series in future. I've got two episodes already pre-recorded for season three, but I think from the, the third race onwards, we might do more live streams, honestly. I, I feel like doing that a lot more. And I feel like in terms of recording and editing, um, I want to do different videos, but for now, um, yeah. What a season season two was. It was a huge success. We won the Drivers Championship, our first Drivers Championship. But not only that, we got a new teammate halfway through the season in Lance Stroll. He picked up six points. Um, and obviously we picked up the rest, leading us towards P3 in the Constructors. 50 points clear of McLaren. So, um, yeah. Um, making up for season one because I'm pretty sure we lost I think it was like p4 in the constructors last season to McLaren because we were the only one picking up the points um, but yeah I cannot wait to get into this man uh, I am so so excited we got a little event with the chassis department um, an employee has become the center of a tweet storm and I think honestly we're, we're always gonna stick up for him I don't why would I ever fire somebody for that i know the rest of that story with the whole tweet storm thingy they you know it was taken out of context whatever but yeah as you guys knew in season two lewis hamilton was retiring so lewis hamilton will no longer be on the grid for this f1 season but what a success season two was now our main objective is to look towards the constructors championship and with a teammate such as lance stroll who was picking up some pretty strong uh, points, uh, st pretty strong results at the end of last season. Um, I think we're going to do just fine. Hell, I think it was uh, either Las Vegas or, or Abu Dhabi, one of the two. I think it was Vegas. Uh, Lance Stroll picked up points all by himself. You know, if you guys remember in Singapore, um, Stroll qualified really well and um, we helped him get that win uh, by holding up the rest of the grid behind him. Um, we didn't have to do that in Vegas. We actually were far out ahead in Vegas. We won the Las Vegas Grand Prix. And so, um, yeah, Lance Stroll got the points all by himself. So I'm really looking forward to next season. But season three begins with Jeddah. No more Bahrain, no more Australia for now. We begin in Jeddah. Uh, one of my bogey tracks. China and Baku return. I love China and Baku. Uh, Monaco, I'm really considering that being the, this being the last season that we have Monaco in. It's getting a bit boring now. Uh, Spain uh, returns as well as Austria as Canada has kicked off the calendar. Uh, Silverstone remains. Hungary returns. I actually found myself missing the Hungaring. Spa will always be there. Zandvoort returns. And Monza, I did say I was going to alternate Imola and Monza this year. It's time for Monza. Singapore obviously remains on the calendar. We haven't brought back Japan just yet. I wanted to find a way to do that, but uh, that'll have to wait till season three as we've decided to bring back Mexico and Brazil in place of Qatar. Um, Portugal, I did say Portimao was going to return and we are going to end off the se uh, season at Las Vegas. So no more season ender at Abu Dhabi for this season. Um, we got a few changes going into this. Of course, we've still got Lance Stroll. We've got a whole wave of money coming in. Compass will be our new sponsor, replacing Duotone for this season. And our contract with Renault ran out. And so we will be Mercedes powered, powered by Mercedes for this season, heading into the 2026 regulations. But now, with number one on our car, this is the new livery. So there you go, 
Season 3 brings to us a whole new livery. Uh, with the silver, or well, the white, the navy blue, and the red. And that is because um, I've decided to take some liberty with this my team. We might be on console, but there are still some workarounds that we can do with uh, this career mode on YouTube. We have a whole new sponsor, a whole new team name, introducing Team Pepsi Racing. That's right, folks. Pepsi Co. has decided to sponsor Sly Team Racing. So no longer are we Sly Team Racing. We've got whole new overalls, a whole new livery, a new badge, uh, and this will be our helmet for this season we'll be using splintered so uh yeah i am really really looking forward to um doing a little team pepsi career mode maybe even picking up some extra views um i've had these plans uh for a while now with team pepsi uh the whole engine regulation uh, the whole engine like power thing that we were going with the powertrain um that changed over time uh originally we were going to go with ferrari but um how season two transpired of course that would never have made sense they're one of our main competitors uh whereas the mercedes powered cars especially mercedes themselves have kind of fallen down a little bit so um yeah that is why we have decided to go with mercedes so we had about 56 million going into this season so all of that is obviously going to go towards our facilities. This is the season where the car becomes truly, truly good. Of course, as you know, in the 2023 season, the grid's actually quite close together, uh, other than Red Bull. And the game has re uh, replicated that pretty much. Um, season 1, we were able to get some pretty high finishes. Uh, the odd win as well uh, when it came down to engine wear or the fact that the AI just isn't very good at Monaco. And then season two, the grid was even closer together. So uh, we were able to win the championship, uh, the driver's championship, but not the constructors. There's been a few changes, though, going into this season. Uh, Williams have uh, really pushed themselves quite far. Of course, Williams, they had a, a bit of a resurgence in Season 2 in terms of R&D. Uh, AlphaTauri still at the bottom. Alpha Romeo have fallen. Haas have fallen after a great start to Season 2 in terms of their car. Um, their bad season has pretty much caught up with them. So um, that's quite unfortunate for them. We're going to be filling in uh, these activities now. Um... And of course, we are also bringing in some new upgrades uh, for this season, of course, uh, to not only catch up to the rest of the field. I mean, this is the highest we've been, so we've actually done a really good job, and I mean, that's to be expected. Uh, we've pretty much got all the upgrades that we could have had without having Facility Spec 3. So uh, we're going to have Facility Spec 3 in a few areas now, so... Um, new parts of course are coming to the car we got some free parts through the engine supplier so mercedes uh, are giving us a bit of a boost as well it's going to be quite i'm quite curious to see how the car is going to perform with this new engine in terms of aerodynamics we're actually top three on the grid so we've got another new aero uh, upgrade coming in uh, pretty soon i am so so excited for this we're still spec 2 on the chassis so pretty much all we have to do is upgrade one of these to max level we're going to do that for fabrication and that is going to end up being our spec 3 at one point at some point um the personnel is now spec 3 so lance stroll is going to have as good a chance as he can ever have at um you know doing the best he can in this new car uh, he's going to be maxed out focused, maxed out overall, and he was already pretty close to that in Season 2. So now with a better car and even somehow even better stats, um, he might be a beast coming into this season, especially later on through the season as we bring uh, new upgrades to the car. Uh, I'm really, 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 really looking forward to seeing how Lance does. Uh, in these races, especially the first one, because um, that's where we'll get a true indicator of how the car is in terms of speed. Um, of course, I've been putting a lot of practice into Jeddah, as you guys know, season one and two. Uh, we really struggled around Jeddah, and Jeddah has just been one of my bogey tracks. I don't think it works very well in this game with the new curb system. So um, 
yeah, if again it doesn't go well, even now I'm actually decent at Jeddah. If it still doesn't go well in this My Team career with these upgraded cars, then I am done with Jeddah. But we got a few changes in the driver market here. Alexander Albon has left Williams and he's gone to AlphaTauri. Yuki Tsunoda's gone to McLaren. Uh, De Vries is somehow still at AlphaTauri. Sargent still at Williams. Felipe Drogovic returns to the F1 grid in the Haas. He will be alongside Liam Lawson. So a fully young team for Haas. Um, and those are the changes that we have. The main one, anyway. I didn't linger on it on the screen, but you might have noticed. The eagle-eyed um, ones of you might have noticed that Valtteri Bottas, for the third season in a row, has changed teams. He was Alfa Romeo in Season 1, McLaren in Season 2, and now... He's back at Mercedes. Valtteri Bottas has returned to Mercedes. He will be alongside Lando Norris. We were quite curious to see who was going to be replacing Lewis Hamilton in that Mercedes seat. I'm sort of disappointed because I was really hoping it would be one of the F2 drivers. Um, but that's going to happen eventually. The more seasons we play, the more people are going to retire. And the more F2 drivers we are going to see on the grid so um yeah but it is still quite intriguing to see a Valtteri Bottas return and it's also quite odd because if you've seen other people's career modes on YouTube uh Bottas has been at McLaren Bottas has been at Mercedes as well he's making the same career moves it's almost as if it's in the coding that um you know these guys are making the same moves it's quite odd but we have some ultimate upgrades ready to um, unlock now that we have a higher specification in terms of the facilities that that is very that's a very very exciting prospect getting those ultimate upgrades in by the end of season three we're going to have an absolute monster of a car uh, but now here we go in the new data center so new team colors new branding new merchandise Pepsi is here in Formula One. Uh, we don't know how long they're going to be a title sponsor for. It's how, sort of like how Stake are with uh, Alfa Romeo. So they don't own the team. I want to um, just illustrate that right now. I want to emphasize that. Pepsi do not own Slide, uh, Slide Team Racing. They are a title sponsor for this season and perhaps future seasons. We'll have to see. Of course, season four is going to be our full new start. Of course, in real life, that is the 2026 season and we're going to act like it here as well. But we've actually fallen down the pecking order, I think. Um, oh no, I think we've actually moved up. We've overtaken Williams with these new upgrades. Aston Martin have fallen. McLaren are the quickest here. Ferrari are up there. Mercedes are up there. Red Bull are as well. Uh, so everybody behind um, Aston Martin, so including us, is quite far behind in the rest of the field. So uh, we're not quite far behind. That is still really close. That is a big, big, big zoom in. But still... Um, that means they're faster than us. So um, Mercedes are actually coming back. So And McLaren are top as well. So I think, honestly, we've chosen the right powertrain going into this season. Because Alfa Romeo and Haas, aren't go aren't, they're not doing too well. Uh, however, we are bottom when it comes to the chassis. So we definitely need these ultimate upgrades. And that's going to shoot us up the field. Like, that, this is how close the grid is, man. And I do like that about F123. Because... Um, yeah, it's replicating the real life season where the grid is actually so, so close. Um, other than teams like, you know, Williams who have to try a little harder. But the grid, like Alpine, Haas, like in one lap pace, we're so, so close. I love it. Uh, and I love how the game is replicating that. But yeah, this is the end of our practice sessions, of course. Uh, so we're getting these upgrades in. And man, it is so, so, so exciting, honestly. Um, look at how close that grid is, man. We're going to, like, just a couple of upgrades and we could be the best team on the grid. Which is so, so exciting, man. Because again, we're going for the constructors. So, it's going to be a little bit of a scrappy start to the season for now. But, um, going through the rest of the season, as long as other people don't keep up with our upgrades, our prospects are looking very very good and now here we go into our first ever qualifying session of season three around Jeddah and uh, we got a few changes to talk about of course 
first thing you're going to notice is the frames. We're at 60 frames per second now, so you're actually seeing how I experienced the game. Unfortunately, since I was on the PS4 in previous seasons, you could only really see it in 30 FPS. But now, yeah, you're seeing my actual gameplay on the last gen version of F123 in 60 FPS. That is so cool. And you've seen that I've actually nailed that first sector the first time. Although I still think that Jeddah isn't the greatest. Going through some of these practice sessions, um, with this car, it feels as though, um, yeah, just Jeddah's not very good in this game. I feel like they've just done too much in terms of how um, harmful the curbs are. Uh, it's fine if you're playing on a wheel, but I'm playing on the controller. And uh, other things you might have noticed, as you can see by that leaderboard, um, Williams have a new second driver, and it's a guy who's also made the similar moves in other people's career modes. Kevin Magnussen has replaced Alex Albon in the Williams. I'm sorry I didn't mention who was Albon's replacement earlier. Um, you know, I had a lot of things to talk about, but yeah. Um, now, the main thing is, is that the qualifying format has changed uh, here. No longer will there be a Q1, a Q2, a Q3. Uh, now, uh, we have short qualifying. So, uh, you'll only get two runs out here um in these qualifying sessions in this season and probably uh, from this point onwards it's been quite um you know uh predictable that we'll get to q3 um at this point and i feel like it just wastes a lot of time um not only because you guys know we're going to make it to q3 most of the time uh, and even and if i don't it's the subject of the video so you'll already know it's quite predictable um but also it just you know, it saves me a bit of time when it comes to editing, um, which I do appreciate quite a lot. So, yeah, um, experiencing short qualifying for the very first time. I've never actually done short qualifying in any F1 game before. I've always done the Q1, Q2, Q3 to replicate real life. So I thought just for this session, just for Jeddah, uh, we're actually... Um, we're going to experience actually going out into qualifying instead of, you know, doing a flying lap every single time. And, yeah, uh, we're going to have a lot of these situations. The last three minutes of the session, uh, there is a lot of people around us. So uh, there could be opportunities for slipstream, opportunities for crashes, maybe. Uh, who knows? Um, people getting in each other's way is going to be a big, big deal. Uh, and I feel like we could actually, if this actually makes... Um, you know, qualifying a lot more unpredictable, a lot more entertaining, and um, can definitely facilitate a lot more surprises. But as you saw with that first lap around Jeddah, we're P1. We've had a really good lap um, for the provisional anyway. So it's a really good start, and all we've got to do now is kind of replicate it with the track evolution. So, um, yeah, the difficulty has been upped. So now you can clearly tell that I have been practicing on Jeddah. I've, you know, done my best to find the best setup. Um, yeah, I did a lot of practicing. So I'm giving Jeddah on the controller the best chance that I really can. And if it still doesn't work out right, then we're just not going to do it anymore in this game. Because, again, there clearly ne needs to be some changes to the curve, specifically in sector one but there are still like i get it there's a high skill gap for Jeddah, um but sector one is a bit too punishing in my opinion and um i think there needs to be some tweaks done because you really don't see that sort of stuff in real life uh so for for controller players Jeddah is quite harsh but we've had a really good start uh of a very similar start to our original lap as we now go around this lap of Jeddah. but that second corner we braked a bit too much um, so we're now down about three tenths from our original lap. We're going through this sector quite well. No, we're not. We've rode the curves a little too bit, uh, a little too much, but we have gained a little bit of time going through that section. Just think about how much time we would have gained had, you know, that whole sector been flawless. It's sector one in Jeddah that is the main problem. But as we now go into sector two, of course. We're feeling pretty good around the rest of the track, but we have some time to make up. And unfortunately, since our provisional lap was pretty much the best we could have mustered, um, yeah, it's not going to get much better from here. I think we've lost too much time in Sector 1. We're really trying for track limits there. We've gained 
quite a lot of time. We've put it down to around a tenth, but it's just not enough. As Yuki Tsunoda on his McLaren debut puts it on pole. Lance Stroll has gone faster than us. Lando Norris in the Mercedes has gone P2. Oscar Piastri is now P1. And we are about to cross the line. What position on the grid are we getting? It's P9. So, not the worst thing in the world, considering, you know, we've got 21 other drivers uh, to compete with. But, um, yeah, we really lost a lot of time um, losing that provisional lap. But look at that, man. Bottas in the Mercedes does well. Leclerc in the Ferraris there. Carlos Sainz picks up where he left off at the beginning of Season 2, but he did drop off quite a bit in Season 2, especially competing with us. But Lance Stroll... For the first time ever, not only has Stroll out-qualified us, but a second driver of ours has out-qualified us. Liam Lawson in the Haas, P10. Amazing for him. Uh, Nick DeFries is so far behind the rest of the grid. They really, really need to replace him. Albon does okay in the AlphaTauri, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, that car is knackered. Um, I don't know why he left Williams, because Williams are now in a much better car. It was a horrible choice for Albon to rejoin the Red Bull family, uh, and he will regret that for sure. But yeah, without further ado, let's go to the grid. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal, and it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. Let's take a look at a topographical map of the Jeddah Street circuit. As you can see, a number of challenging corners for the drivers to master here. We'll see just how much the teams have benefited from their time spent in practice this weekend. And like many street circuits, this track has the potential to punish drivers that get it wrong. Let's hope we avoid any safety cars today. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position and Oscar Piastri completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid we have, Sonoda, Norris, Leclerc, Perez, Bottas, Stroll, the owner driver, Liam Lawson, Russell, Verstappen, Ocon, Gasly, Teo Porcher, Albert, Joe, Drogovic, Sargent, Magnussen, Hulkenberg, and Nick de Vries rounds off the grid. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. I'm joined by Anthony Davidson at the start of a new season, and it is a clean slate. Absolutely anything is possible right now. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice, and they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. So here we are, just like Anthony Davidson said, we are now in the tense few moments before this whole new season begins. And we're in a bit of an unfamiliar position compared to last season. P9 is where we're starting in um, Jeddah. Uh, really unlucky with that, but I do like the unpredictability of the short qualifying. There was no second chances right there. Um... And Lance Stroll out qualified us. So uh, we are likely going to go with the soft to mediums strategy for this race. So as the formation that gets underway here for the first time this season, each driver will be wanting to make an impactful start to their season by earning those crucial points and getting a confidence booster right from the off. So as all the cars reform the grid, the drivers will be hoping to get a strong start. They'll want to earn some valuable points from today's race, with final communications being done with their race engineers, ensuring their planned strategies are all in place. So most people seem to be going for the same strategy as us, of course, including Lance. So, um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is 100% stick to our pit lap uh, that we're going with, because I don't want to get in the way of Lance in any way, shape or form. Um, I'm hoping uh, the strategists of uh, 
prioritized Lance because he's finished ahead and will look to pit him first or uh, at least a lap later. But here we go. Up to five red lights for the start of season three. And we are underway. It's a pretty good start from Lance as Valtteri Bottas looks to cut him off. But there is a space down the right that we have managed to take. And we're going to slot ourselves just behind Yuki Tsunoda. Lance is to the left of us. Valtteri Bottas is looking to slot himself into the left there. That was a very audacious move by the Flying Finn right there. Uh, there wasn't a lot of space. And uh, yeah, good on him. He actually made the pass there. Um, Charles Leclerc. P9 just behind us, Liam Lawson has stayed stagnated on P10, but Lance Stroll has jumped up from P8 to P6. So really good start from our teammate right there as he looks to, um, you know, start the season off really strong. And honestly, it's a great sign uh, of things to come uh, if he is qualifying that highly. And of course, his focus is quite high, so his race pace should be pretty good as well. We'll have to see. But um, yeah. I'm not the most confident around Cheddar, you guys know um, already I've mentioned throughout this episode that I don't think it's the greatest in F123 when you're playing on controller, but I've been practicing quite a lot for this. Um, I had the specific plan of making this the first race of the new season, um, and we're giving it just a last chance, you know? If, if I think it's unsavable on controller, especially with these cars getting more and more and more quick and less uh, controllable in terms of the brake zones which Jed is very important for then there's really no point in keeping it on the calendar but Lance Stroll has given us quite the slipstream there and he's actually going to cover off Valtteri Bottas as we look to make the pass around the outside there is a little bit of contact between us and our teammate uh, on the on our underbody for some reason he ghosted right the rulers that was a weird thing for the game to do there uh, that has happened on some rare occasions but I, I'm glad it's happened okay me and Lars just haven't crashed into each other but it's as if the AI acted as if I weren't there and yeah whatever pretty weird but Charlotte Claire has taken advantage of our double teaming on Bottas right there um, as he slotted himself into P8 and he is now looking to chase after us but uh he's about a second behind us so me and lance are doing quite well i'm actually able to stay within the slipstream of our teammate and uh, i think we're going to look for the pass right here uh we make a little bit of contact with the wheel there not too much a little bit of a love tap as lance is going to be fighting us um because yeah ai in this game um it really doesn't matter if we have a teammate or not half the time but uh, yeah, that wasn't too much of a difficult fight as we now look to chase after Yuki Tsunoda. We're going to dive down the inside of Yuki. Lance is following us, so we're actually going to give him a slipstream into this occasion, especially since we don't have DRS anyway. So uh, we're actually going to give Yuki a squeeze there and actually allow Lance to make the repass. So pretty good teamwork between me and the Canadian um, as he goes up into P5. And honestly... Um, given how much ERS we've already used uh, to just get past him, I actually think Lance is quicker than us um, in this particular circuit, which again, makes sense. It's a bogey circuit for me, which is most of the reason why I wanted to keep it and why it's the first track of this calendar. But if, again, if it's unsavable in this game, just like Monaco, uh, then, you know, they'll be removed. Uh, and then I'll probably return them in the final season that we do or whatever. But yeah. We're letting Lance go out in front. Yuki makes the pass right here before the DRS detection zone. So I think we actually are going to get DRS ahead of Yuki. So no, no we're not. So bit of trouble there. But we're actually pitting. Um, I forgot that I pit a lap earlier. And that's because these soft tires felt absolutely dead. We're actually going to pit for the hards. That's how bad of, of an experience I had on the softs towards the end there. At first they're pretty good, but they, they die out. And when they do die out, you, you actually lose a lot of time, a lot more time than you would think around Jeddah. So we're actually gonna go onto the hards because I did feel really, really good on the hards in the practice sessions, um, ironically enough, considering uh, it's the least grip. But yeah, we're pitting onto the hard tires. Pierre Gasly has DNF, so uh, he must have had an engine failure at some point. A pretty bad start for Alpine, and we haven't seen them at all in these races, uh, in this race. And I don't think we're going to see Alpine anytime soon, so it's a really rough start to the season for them. Um, as we now go on to lap 9, we've got some space. Um, people ahead of us 
are quite far ahead and there's a safety car as Lance has actually pit. So, um, good for him. That's perfect timing for our teammate right there. Um, as he now has to pit, especially if other people end up pitting, like, uh, some of the people ahead of us might actually end up behind. And some people are pitting, I think. Uh, yeah, there's some at Alfa Romeo, there's a Mercedes pitting, Lance Stroll's ahead of all those who are pitting. There's a Ferrari who's just come out, that's probably Carlos Sainz. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Lance Stroll, you might have noticed, we did slow down as we, uh, went towards turn one. I wanted to make sure Lance stayed ahead of us. Uh, he do, he is quicker in this race, so we're gonna have, we're gonna allow him to stay out in front of us uh, to get as many points as possible uh, as we now look to form up behind the safety car. So um, Jeddah hasn't gone quite as planned. Obviously, we prefer to be the lead driver, especially since we are the world champion. We've got the number one on our car now, uh, but yeah, I think in this particular race, Lance has quicker pace and. Uh, yeah, it's better to let him go back out in front. But, um, yeah, here we are behind the safety car on lap 11. A few changes have been made behind us. Yuki Senoda has taken advantage of the fact we're in a safety car and has decided to pit for the soft tires. I think he might have started on the medium. So he's doing a medium to soft strategy. So he's going to be dangerous. He is going to be very dangerous. And now I'm actually starting to regret going on to these hards because if I'd have gone on to the mediums, then that would have negate like the safety car would have negated um you know the fact that we had to pit a lap earlier to get rid of the softs so uh we're going to struggle a little bit for the rest of this race as people are on better tires especially yuki on the softs so we're gonna have to defend quite hard and i think that's going to be our strategy now uh just to let lance go out in front as much as possible um but also try to keep up with him at first because uh yeah yuki is already on our behind um, Lance didn't have the best turn one there, so we've had to slow down a little bit more, which in turn has slowed down Yuki. But already Yuki has gapped Valtteri, so um, yeah, that's an indication of how OP the soft tyres are around Jeddah in this season. So um, yeah, we'll have to see uh, how that goes for the rest of the tracks, because if you guys remember season two, the soft tyres weren't exactly the greatest, especially around tracks like Portimao. So um, I'm quite curious to see how they are in Season 3, especially since we're still in the same regulations. So I, I doubt they're going to be much better uh, still. So I think on most tracks, we might actually be starting on mediums or, or hards. A lot of the time last season, we actually started on the hards. But um, yeah, already Lance has gapped us. Um, he'll be getting a slipstream off of Oscar Piastri in P3. But yeah, I think somebody else has pitted. Uh, because we're in lap 12 now, and we're actually in P5, so I think somebody pitted on the last lap of the safety car or something. I'm really confused, um, or maybe it's just maybe I just didn't notice, and I'm being dumb here. But Lance is in P4, so hopefully Lance can keep up with um, you know the guys out in front. Because wow, um, yeah, <laughs> he could be getting a podium. Uh, but Yuki is now really challenging us with those soft tyres now. And we're going to have to start defending proper hard here. Um, yeah, we're going to have to squeeze him out a little bit there. And yeah, we do that as Valtteri has now caught up to us. But it doesn't matter because by the end of the um, 13th lap, Yuki is now overtaking us. I don't know if he overtook us in time to get DRS. Uh, I don't think we have it. No, we don't. And Valtteri Bottas has managed to overtake Yuki in all that commotion and is now looking to overtake us. We've got the inside, though. So uh, in this first turn, it's all that matters. We're going to try and squeeze Valtteri out. But he does have the inside here. But uh, for now, we are ahead of Valtteri Bottas. So um, good defending so far. And we're looking for a good 4-5 finish. Perhaps even more if Lance could take advantage of DRS. That should be enabling quite soon. So uh, I think P5 is our ceiling for now. Uh, we're going to have to defend pretty hard for it, though, as uh, Valtteri Bottas is pressuring us quite a lot. He's looking to go around the outside. We reached the apex before him, however, and we managed to stay out in front. But not for long. Lap 15, and um, Valtteri Bottas is now going down the inside. He's got DRS. And uh, he does overtake us in his debut race in that Mercedes-Benz, in that Mercedes-AMG, sorry. So, um, yeah, 
good overtake for him, but I think it's too late in the race for him to catch Lance. So uh, we've done a good job holding him up here. And I'm actually going to stick behind Bottas. We're going to let go of the throttle a little bit. He actually must have slowed down quite a bit or something to try and uh, play a little DRS chicken. But um, yeah, that slowing down has left us susceptible to... Um, Yuki Sonoda, whose soft tyres are going off, to be honest, and with the DRS, we are going to rocket past Valtteri. Uh, but unfortunately, it was going to happen eventually. We have made the mistake that we made so many times last season around Jeddah when we got caught on that curb, and that was a little bit of a dangerous rejoining onto the track. So, of course, that was an, Ill an illegal overtake, and Bottas does squeeze us quite a bit. Uh, as a receipt and now we're side by side going into a corner where two certainly doesn't go oh and he does hit us Bottas hits us and we've spun out we have spun out and we have lost a lot of time here I'm going to try and spin round but Sonoda is impatient Yuki Sonoda is impatient in that McLaren he hits us and we are not able to turn around properly and not only have we lost the position to Bottas but Sonoda surely that was illegal like, I understand the collision with Bottas might be a racing incident, but the Sonoda should have let us at least spin, like, at least let us get out the way of the track. Obviously, in real life, that would have caused a red flag or a, or a yellow flag or something, but wow, Yuki hits us, and, um, you know, we're unable to escape that, and now um, we're under pressure from the Haas of Felipe Drogovic, who's looking to get his very first points in F1 so that safety car he's managed to take a lot of advantage uh, of but Sergio Perez does overtake him he does have a five second penalty though I wonder how that occurred um, but now we're behind uh, the Williams of Kevin Magnussen who is now fighting with Yuki Tsunoda so um, we could at least scrounge two points from this race here um, and it will be against Sonoda, and it's quite poetic, because in Season 1 it was Sonoda we were fighting against the most around this track, but it's good to get at least a little bit of revenge. Uh, Sonoda did ruin our race quite a bit there, unfortunately. I'm surprised he didn't get pu any punishment for that, but now we are looking to get as close to him as possible. We're running out of DRS. We are literally giving everything we have to try and get this back. We don't have to worry about Sergio Perez overtaking us because, again, he does have a five-second penalty. And now we're just going to stick behind Sonoda to get as much of a slipstream as possible. We're going to use our ERS to try our best to get this position, at the very least, get P9. We've had a good race in Jeddah if it wasn't for that collision with Bottas. And quite honestly, it was both mine and Bottas' fault. I'm not going to say Bottas deserves a penalty because, quite frankly, he doesn't. But the overtake has been made on Sonoda. His gamble onto the soft tyres has not paid off. And that's karma for not letting us, you know, turn our car around properly. You know, it would have been a yellow flag in that area. And him hitting us like that, I just, it can't have been, uh, it can't have been legal at all. And with the DRS, Sonoda is trying to get us. Carlos Sainz crosses the line to take the first win of the season. So he picks up where he would have liked to left uh, would have liked to have left off in season two. His good form continues. We unfortunately get a P9. At least we've gotten points. But where is Lance placed? Where did he manage to get at the end there? Kevin Magnussen is driver of the day. I'd call that a semi success around Jeddah. Standing performance today under intense pressure to take a well earned victory here at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs, and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy, and to stay out of trouble. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit, familiar to fans across the globe, a world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. Well, 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 Lord Stroll! Managed to take advantage of the DRS like I said he would be able to. And he has got a podium. So um, a bit of bad luck on our end, of course, with the racing incident with Bottas and then Sonoda's shenanigans. But um, we managed to scrounge up two points, so at least we came out with something. But Lance Stroll holding it down for the team, getting the team's first podium of the season 
uh, and out qualifying and beating us in the race legitimately without any help for the first time. That is such a good sign. I'm actually feeling so good about what could happen for the rest of the season. And I know some of you guys, two of you guys in the chat, uh, in the live stream uh, last episode, uh, you were fans of Lance Stroll, so I know you're happy about that. I know you're happy about the fact we've kept him on the team. It's great. Wow, that is absolutely amazing for us. So, um, yeah, we're definitely being able to take the fight um, to the other teams in the Constructors this season without having to single-handedly carry the team up, clearly. Um, I'm so happy about that. So, so happy. That is amazing. Lance Stroll P3, we get P9 looking to make swift improvements in the second race. And that will be China. We were pretty good around that track, so I'm looking forward to it. Guys, thank you all so much for tuning in and watching this episode of F123, my team. If you guys liked it, be sure to hit that like button as hard as you possibly can. Thank you for joining me for this introduction episode to Season 3. And I will see you all in the second episode very, very soon. Until next time... Peace.